In the last video, we saw what was really a blend of old and new. The old would be the date time and the small date time data types. We've had those forever in SQL Server. The new would be the date and the time data types. Those are new in SQL Server 2008. So we didn't have those in 2005. They're new in SQL Server 2008. And they continue in R2 as well. Now there are a couple of other probably very interesting to a lot of people data types for the SQL Server 2008 crowd as well. And that's what we're going to focus on in this video. So this video talks about the date time two and the date time offset data types. Now these are new data types also in SQL Server 2008 and no changes in SQL Server 2008 R2. Okay, now let's talk about some of these differences. First thing I want to show you is some of the functions that we're used to working with. So we're used to seeing get date. We talked about that in the last video. This returns the server date and time, the local date and time on the server. Okay. Now we can use what's called use UTC date which is the universal time coordinates. This is basically what Greenwich uh, Mean Time is today called. Uh, so this is the UTC date here. So you can see that our server time is let's see, 5 hours, 1439 to 1939, 5 hours behind UTC time. Okay, so we're actually on the server. We're in the central standard time and the UTC date is five hours ahead of where we are. So time zone awareness is what we're starting to discover here. Well there's some other ones in here as well. We also have a sys date time. Now it may not be clear what this one will actually return until I see that little pop-up. Do you see this? Oh, dang it, there it is. Oh, and it just went away. <laughs> My computer uh, kind of glitched on me there for a half a second. Let's see if it'll pop up and I can get it. Okay, you see right there. Notice that it returns a date time too. Oh, so this is something that's different between get date and get UTC date and sys date time. It returns a date time too. Now let's talk about what the difference is. So this returns a date time Two, and let's go ahead and take a look. Notice that we're going down to 100 nanoseconds here. This is the seven decimal places. So you see the difference between get date, which returns a date time, and here's date time two. So date time two, let's just go down here, say date time two has larger dates that it can work with and more accuracy down to one hundredths nanosecond. Right? That's the 0.7 down here. That's the accuracy, 100 nanoseconds. Right? Now, we can actually specify the scale over here. We can specify how many decimal places we want. So we can actually say something like, um, let's declare date time 2 to be a date time 2 data type and we'll assign it equal to get date. Now watch what will happen. I'm going to show you a couple of things. I'm probably going to wind around a couple of roads here to make my point. Um, let's just select that. Now notice that we are taking a date time. You can see it says that it returns the date time data type and we are assigning it to a date time 2. When we return the date time two, it simply makes zeros for those last four decimal places. You see them? Now, if we change this instead, let me just put the go so that the IntelliSense can help us out here to sys date time. Run it again. Now we get the full date time two because it actually returns the date time two. Now what we can do though is specify this. Hold on, not to... So I'm now going to say, you know what, I don't need all 
seven decimal places. I need four decimal places. So I don't need to go down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to the nanosecond down here. I need to actually just go to four here. Okay. So we tell it to two, and when we do that now and hit execute, notice that we only get four decimal places. So you're telling it the accuracy, the number of decimal places that you want. It defaults, you can see up here, it defaults to seven. So that is your date time too. It's just going to have a wider range of dates and you're going to be more accurate and have uh, just more scale on your decimal places. Now the date time offset, let me show you this. Now here's the, um, up here, is this showing, notice that we're working with sysdate time. Actually, I'm going to bring this down here. Okay. So let's just come down here and make kind of a line. And let's just say we're looking at the sysdate time. Does it tell us in any way right here where we are in relationship to UTC time, to Greenwich Mean Time, whatever you want to call it, it's UTC today? It doesn't, right? We can't tell that 1444 is 12 hours before, 5 hours after UTC. We don't really get any inclination of it at all. What we can do is we can use the sys date time offset. So now we come down here. And this is now a time zone aware version of date time 2. Okay? So returns date time offset data type. So here's how I think of this. Date time offset is a time zone aware version of date time 2. So it always includes, it includes the offset from UTC. So we can actually see here that, yes, we get the exact same time value when we run these two, but here we're actually five hours before UTC. Does that make sense? So we can actually compare this to the UTC. Now we actually can come down here and use the switch offset. So let's actually give us a... Um, date, let's do this, give me a couple of seconds to write some things here, date time 2 equals sys date time, date time offset, date time offset equals sys date time offset, oh, I'll show you this, there's some, there's some um, oddities here, so I'll make this wrong or underscore one and notice that I want to reference here or I am referencing date sys date time offset okay. now note here is just your standard sys date time oh Scott come on we need to uh, select them don't I Let's just select the first one. We'll start with just the date time two. Right? We get all the way down to the seven decimal places, which is great. But what does sys date time return? It returns a date time two. We now have a variable that is said to be a date time offset variable. But yet we're not assigning a date time offset value. We're assigning a date time two. Here's the question. Does date time 2 include the offset information? Does date time 2 include how far away we are from UTC time? We can look at it right here. Notice that it appears to say that we are right on UTC time. This is one of those little mental gotchas that will get you. When you are using a date time offset data type, you must assign it a date time offset value.
you cannot use sys date time because it returns date time too which is not a time zone aware data type we have to use the sys date time offset which returns a date time offset type watch the difference sorry we hit the F4 instead of F5 notice that here we've assigned date time offset 1 which is this column here to be a date time 2 and we get nothing we get a 0 it appears as though we're on UTC time but we aren't okay? notice here when we come down here and use the correct function this returns a date time offset it includes the time zone awareness information that we want now we can change the time zone as well this is one of the reasons you will want to use the date time offset is to make it very easy to switch your time zones around there is a function called switch offset okay. switch offset you pass in the date time offset in this case it's our variable date time offset two and you tell it the time zone that you want to return so I want it to show me what it's like in you have to use a plus or a minus sign so I want to say I want it to be five hours ahead so what I'm telling it with the offset is instead of seeing five hours from this time I want to see five hours from UTC time so it's saying basically go to UTC time and tell me the plus five from that so look at this this one might be a little bit confusing. Here's the original value here, date time offset 2, and it's showing that the current server date and time is 5 hours before UTC. But we've said switch that offset, so give me what time it is local to somebody who is 5 hours ahead of UTC. So there you are. There's the 5 hours ahead of UTC. So what it really boils down to is if you know that you have clients in South Korea and you know what the UTC is for them and I and I don't let's say it's plus seven I have no idea when you are showing all of your dates you're going to have some sort of a function that says get local time and all you have to do is use the switch offset and say I need to correct it by pushing it ahead seven hours now I, I can guess where some of the more advanced folks are going you're probably thinking well wait Scott can't I use the date add function yes you can use the date add function however date add will not return all seven decimal places here let's just say date add we say we want to add in hours I want to add um, do I say five hours if I want to be five hours ahead of UTC no, I kind of got to know where I am. I have to know that I am five hours behind and that I want to be point five, or five hours ahead. So really that's a net of 11 hour difference here. Uh, so <laughs> then I say to what? To the date time uh, offset or we could choose the date time too. So I can add 11 hours here. Did I? Uh, oops, I got to do all of those here I can add 11 hours to this oops and I went ahead an extra one there so I can manually do this but the the trick with this one notice we get the exact same information here uh, we don't get the time zone offset uh, but the trick with this one is that I had to know to count to 10. And you, you saw me mess it up as I was just kind of talking through it. I had to know what my time zone was, and I had to know how many hours away from UTC the time zone I needed to go to was. And that's kind of a tricky uh, bit. It's just a lot easier to use this switch offset. So the suggestion is if you have time zones that you need to display or, or dates and times that you need to display across multiple time zones, you have clients to deploy uh, all over the world, then the date time offset is going to make it much easier to show your time zone aware data.